This project has been sitting right in front of me on my desk for far too long and I finally made some progress with it. So what this is, is the Kui, and I have no idea what this product is actually called. Um, it is only available from what I've seen on the Walmart site and it's just a Chinese reseller. Everything is in Chinese and there's no instruction guide at all, but it is an extremely useful device and I have not seen anyone like this and I'm not sure why. But anyhow, what it is, is it allows you to plug in a wired mouse and a keyboard and supply it with power. And then you could pair the whole device with up to eight different Bluetooth devices. So you could have a tablet, a cell phone, a computer, a blah, whatever, a whole bunch of different stuff. And you toggle between it, pressing this button here. So you could have one keyboard and mouse control a bunch of different Bluetooth devices, which was super handy for it from an adaptive uh, accessibility standpoint because you don't have to keep plugging and unplugging. Real handy thing. Uh, what I had done in a previous version of one of these is adapted this. So instead of having this push button switch, I put a tail dongle on it so that you could use a regular 3.5 millimeter jack push button switch so that it is accessible. So it worked out real well, but then the user came back and wanted something a little bit more because he's very uh, into neat, clean cabling. And I, I have to respect that because so am I. Um, we have far too many cables in our lives. I recognize that. So his idea was this. He has a uh, power chair and he wanted to have the unit mounted to the head unit of his chair. And instead of plugging the mouse and the keyboard directly into the unit here, bring it out with some cabling and then bundle up the cables. And also for the power, have some capability of turning on and off the power with a toggle adapted switch. So I, I took a look at this and I had two primary ideas with this. The first and the most complicated was to just do a small head unit with a, just a display and just have the display up here and then have a wire go down to underneath the chair where all this stuff would be bundled up. That was idea one. And it's going to be a little more complicated for reasons I'll get into. But then I had another idea, and this is also based on the user's request because he wanted to have the unit up front, less for the display, more for the Bluetooth antenna is in there, is in the unit, right? So if he has it up in the air, out in his chair, it's not buried somewhere. So the, the chance of that signal getting messed up is less so. And makes perfect sense to me. So with that in mind, and since I had taken one of these apart before, I took it apart again. And inside, you have this board and under normal conditions, you have, this is where power comes in through a USB-C and the keyboard and mouse go into these two USB-A. And then normally there's another USB port here that's just to provide downstream power if you need to. There's the tiny push button and right here is the onboard antenna. So you can see you kind of want to have the antenna there. And these eight little LEDs, blue LEDs, do the status indication. So I thought to myself, <clears throat> instead of having a bunch of cables going down, why don't I take this and bring the USB and the power and everything down to a base unit, which would sit buried in the chair that would have those connections and leave just kind of the, what I call the head unit up top uh, this gives me the benefit of just using the LEDs. I don't have to 
another microcontroller that figures out which one is currently selected. I have this on board. And it is remarkably easy to hook into. And you could see that I've just tag soldered um, onto the D plus and D minus on the mouse and the keyboard. I think I can't, I can never remember which is a keyboard and mouse. I don't think it actually matters. Um, but there's one here that I tied into and then one here that I tied into. I had removed this other USB because I was experimenting and I realized they don't really need to remove it, but I took it off anyway. And up here, I tied in to a point for positive and for negative. Because as I probe the circuit, as it should be, all of the grounds are common and all of the power is common. So the power here, 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 everywhere is common. So I only need to worry about bringing it up one place, so to speak, uh, instead of individually wiring each jack. So I knew if I supplied power anywhere, it would get everywhere, which is not always the case, but in this case, it is. Next thing I said is, well, what do I do to bring these data lines and these power lines down to the base unit in the chair? I was thinking about cabling. Well, Normally this would be USB and USB is shielded and it has, you know, speed limitations. You know, it, it likes to run at a certain speeds. So I couldn't just run bare wire. I could, but it'd probably be a bad idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also uh, am big on replaceable cabling because cabling breaks all the time. So I, I don't like hard wired cables. I like cables that could be replaced. And I wanted something that's latching. Well, latching, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the push button, seven data lines, or seven lines down. Uh, what would do that? Well, our good and inexpensive friend, Cat5 RJ45 cabling, AKA ethernet, gigabyte, Bit, whatever you want to call it, networking cable. It's cheap. It's available in a ton of different lengths. You can make a custom length if you want to. You can get latching ones and covered ones and everything else. So I thought for this initial prototype, even though it's kind of a chunky thing, it's still smaller than having, you know, a couple of different wires in different directions. Luckily, there is a handy breakout board for RJ45 that you can get on Amazon for a couple bucks. And it simply breaks out the RJ45 into eight handy dandy solder points. And then I just looked at the specs for the RJ45 cabling and the ethernet networking uses twisted pairs. So it's a pair of wires, positive and negative, that handle the data and there's multiple channels so there's eight all together uh, normally only two pairs or four wires are used in ethernet and i said to myself well paired wiring and da 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 and positive and negative data well that sounds a lot like usb so this cable's probably going to be able to handle it fine also these cables are designed for very high speed connections on the better shield or shielded which is nice too so there we go. I think I had a good idea there. Then I figured out the pairing and the right pins to connect to. And there's a couple of different, and I can't find my little piece of paper that has the, the pinouts, but the pinouts are very easily ex available. So I paired one of the USBs to one twisted pair, the other to the other twisted pair. I tied power and ground to another pair and then I, I only need a single wire for the push button so I have just one part of the pair on that. So this is what it ends up looking like and it fits into a unit kind of like this. This is my prototype red. The actual one will be in uh, black and I'm also going to be mounting it. It gets mounted 
flush in there and I'm going to have some sort of uh, light pipe or something that will make it a little easier to see what is currently selected. Uh, but as you can imagine, I was fiddling all day long trying to get the right dimensions for all these things because this, this board is odd shaped to begin with. It's got weird cutouts, it doesn't have consistent mounting points, so it was a lot of time with the dial calipers and doing some test prints to get this all together, but that's, that's working together pretty well. So that's the head unit. So this will be up at the chair level and it will be connected with the RJ45 cable. Okay, so underneath, now I need to do the opposite. I need to take the RJ45 and I need to break out the devices in, in equivalent, it ends up being an equivalent to the stuff that's up here, right? If I have a mouse here, I need a mouse here, keyboard here, keyboard there. There's the RJ45 and there's the power. So I have little breakout boards, a, a USB-C power, the RJ45, and then the keyboard and mouse connections. And it's, it's connected the same way as it is on the other end. So it's just passing through. So instead of having all these individual wires, it's going through the, the network cable, the pseudo network cable in this case. And uh, so underneath, so th this unit will be hidden under the chair with all the other million wires that are there. And all the jacks are on one side. I do that on purpose because then everything comes out one side. So the user will plug in the network cable up to the head unit. They will plug in their mouse and their keyboard or whatever equivalent. Uh, this particular user uses an IntelliKeys often, so it'd probably be an IntelliKeys tied into here, and then provide this power. And then when it is powered up, and I think I've still got these wires connected, there's some temporary stuff in here for, um, yeah, see, it just turned on, which is nice. It is currently tied into a little touchpad, and it's paired with my phone, which is floating around somewhere. Um, it is working. So the, the, it's a pure wiring job. There's no microcontroller. There's no software or anything else. That's where I really kind of wanted with the version one is just a pure wiring setup that didn't require any other new components other than running all of these connections all over the place. What is not here yet, and this is why I have these test lead wires in here, is there will be two 3.5 millimeter jacks in this unit also. And one of them will be used to toggle the power on and off. So it will turn on and off the power. So if there is some sort of power outage, the user can physically shut off the power so this does not drain their wheelchair. The other one will get tied eventually into, ends up being in effect pressing that switch, that button. So the other back will be for setting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there'll be two 3.5 millimeter jacks here that you plug in regular mono or stereo or TRS cords into, and uh, that'll control the power and the current thing selected. Um, so I think we are looking really pretty good. I'm happy that, that I finally wired and powered it up today. And uh, I was glad to see that it actually worked, that my theory of running the USB through ethernet would work. I figured it would, but you never know until you actually do it. So next up, um, I'll be doing the jacks and getting that stuff wired. I'll have to redo the, this model a little bit uh, to make space for them. It's always kind of tough trying to fit all these little eggs in one little basket as small as you can. And I'm not sure how big the EnviroCare uh, control is for some reason. I could not find specs on the width of their controller. Uh, but th this is slightly wider. Um, let me put this up for scale. It's a little, it's a little bit wider because it has to do the RJ45. Hopefully that is not too bad. I have the RJ45 going down 
and if I need to change orientation, okay, but I figured down is probably best. And then mounting options and whatnot, we could figure out, you know, it, this is going to be, it's a rectangle, it's a cube, right? So it's hopefully not going to be too difficult to mount. And I could put mounting points on there as we go through this. So that's where we are. This is finally making some progress and it looks like it's all over the place, but I actually had to take it all apart to do this video. So more to come soon. Thanks for watching.